on dispatches tonight, the innermost secrets of the largest spy base in Britain, run by the Americans high on the Yorkshire Dales at Menwith Hill. Tonight, dispatches follows a group of local campaigners as they penetrate deep inside the base and, with the discovery of some extraordinary documents, reveals for the first time exactly what goes on there. If the Cold War is at an end, why is Menwith Hill expanding? And are the Americans now targeting Britain's commercial secrets? That's the first dispatch of this new season. Who's listening to whom inside the hill? These domes mark an electronic spy center run by the U.S. National Security Agency, the NSA. It's one of the world's most secret places, in the heart of Yorkshire. Memmouth Hill is an absolute excrescence in the landscape. That base is about total unaccountability, where it's not even been debated in Parliament whether that base should be in this country. We know now that Menwith Hill Station is a signals intelligence gathering centre, that it um, intercepts telecommunications, that it is a surveillance centre, it's a spy base, and it's supposed to be very secure. Everybody who picks up a phone can be monitored from Menwith Hill, and that's really a pretty horrible thought. And these women really do know what they're talking about, because they've been there. They've been across the barbed wire into the base, not once or twice, but over and over again. And as a result, they and dispatchers have learnt, for the first time, just exactly what goes on inside the hill. Two thousand expatriate Americans live and work at Menwith Hill. Officially, they run a relay station for the U.S. Defense Department. The agreement for the base to be here is still classified. It's now 40 years since the British War Office promised the U.S. Army 500 acres of farmland near Harrogate to build the new base. Then the NSA took over in 1966. Eight years after that, they started constructing giant space satellite tracking dishes. To hide what the dishes do, they're built inside large white golf balls, or ray domes. The numbers of domes at Menwith Hill containing these dishes has been growing at an extraordinary rate. I've literally asked dozens of questions as an MP about phone tapping, about the implications under the law if this place is being abused, and I have been either blocked or given the stock answer, uh, this is a matter for the Ministry of Defence, or this is something that we decline to answer as previous governments have declined. What is the purpose of this space? Who are they spying on? Who are they listening into? I think we have a right to know. Have you heard of Memory Hill Station? Yeah. Do you know what it's for? It's early warning station. Isn't it? In the local market town, Otley, these women are active members of a campaign against the base. Rachel Ayres is a research biologist at the University of Leeds. Christine Dean studies local history and works as a museum volunteer. That's interesting. Now, before you start answering questions, And until recently, Alison Greenalsh Watson was a postmistress working in the Yorkshire Dales. Yeah, and we're um, we're just asking people how they feel about it. You know, it's a top secret place, and you never know what's going on at it. Yeah. I've been only slightly connected with the peace movement. I never actually joined CND, but I was always sort of supportive, but very much on the fringes because I was busy with a big family and earning a living and, and things like that. Amy Scott is a grandmother and a pensioner. She's just completed a college course in art. 
I'm quite worried about the future for my grandchildren. This was the thing that upset me most, that if there ever actually was a war, which I didn't really believe would happen, but if there was a war, then this whole area would be devastated because of Menrith Hill. Anne Lee is a retired physics teacher. Her roots run deep in Yorkshire's history, back through generations. Her fears about her son's future have reinforced her feelings about the military significance of men with Hill. This is the, uh, the old family tomb. When we initially wanted to make a protest about men with Hill Station, we used to try to talk to the Americans, then discovered that they're not allowed to talk to foreign nationals. We wanted them to know that we, we didn't agree with what they were doing. Um, and. We tried to raise public awareness and then discovered how difficult that was. Because if you haven't got the information to tell people what the base is about, they continue to believe the myth that it is there for their benefit. For the last two years, the women from Motley have used remarkable methods to discover for themselves what the base is about. Menwith Hill Station is 562 acres of the Yorkshire Dales. It's got a five and a half mile perimeter. It is impossible for that perimeter to be secured. You can't just go up to the main gate and say, I would like to walk down through the radio field and have a look at this and see your new building. And uh, you can't do that. So you go in quietly somewhere. I've been inside Mimith Hill Station at least 500 times. I've long ago lost count. How we get in is classified information. <laughs> but, um, I mean, it's, it's obviously not like a theme park or something. Well, it's, it's, it's actually a theme park that's probably better defended because they want to get the money off you as you go in. <laughs> there are measures. There are patrols that go around in vans. There are foot patrols. There used to be dogs as well, but the dogs got to know so well. I think they were quite friendly and, you know, they'd roll over to have their tummies tickled. I'm still scared every time I go in. I'm not going to stop going in there. I'm not going to stop trying to expose it uh, as much as I can. This is the new stuff that's that sound surveillance equipment they've put on the ops fence. And uh, it's supposed to detect the sound of metal fatigue snipping in the night. But NSA sound surveillance equipment fails to send an alert as the intruders scale the final fence. I've even been inside one of the golf balls. There was nothing inside because recently they've been constructing the golf balls before and then building the dishes inside so that you can't see what the dish is like, which way it's pointing. And I'd taken a milk bottle with me and I left the milk bottle on the doorstep with a little note in it that said, two pints, please. <laughs> Exploring far and wide inside the hill, the women from Motley have found that security precautions are strikingly lax. Information on the base and its facilities is just left lying around for anyone to see. Just walking um, around the base, you see notices. You can walk into buildings and read notice boards, and you can find out information like that. You, this way. <laughs> After so many incursions, Ministry of Defence police who guard the perimeter are used to finding women astray. Often, they pass undetected. But unless they do damage, they commit no criminal offence. I don't really break the law of trespass because I agree to leave when I'm asked to leave. I'm causing a nuisance to certain people. But I do feel that I have a justification because the nuisance that they cause and the, 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 I feel quite affronted by the fact that uh, the United States has, a, has a, that kind of base there. Good night. Keep moving, please. This is 
the National Security Agency Central Security Service regulation concerning relations with foreign nationals. National Security Agency Central Security Service affiliates are forbidden from close and continuing associations with foreign nationals, which are in incompatible with the agency's personnel security criteria for clearance and access to sensitive compartmentalized information. The National Security Agency calls me a foreign national. My mother's family is recorded in our parish church records in Elizabethan times, which is, when you think about it, before the Mayflower even took the Pilgrim Fathers to America. Security at Menwith Hill is so lax that even their own security enforcement regulations have fallen into the hands of the Otley women. With only a small part of the wealth of NSA documents obtained by them and by dispatchers. I mean, it's so obvious, isn't it, the place? And still growing. Using these documents, together with local planning information, the women from Otley have built up a vivid picture of what goes on inside the hill. And it tells you on the set. Yeah, all right. penciled in on all well these done. rooms are where, they would where the lose. secure data store <laughs> and the tape vault and the, and the secure telephone system is. This is the uh, total quality management statement. We will only tolerate ethical behaviour oh, yes. in every aspect of our dealings oh, with customers, mm. suppliers, communities and fellow workers. Oh, right. There is a letter written by Studeman, who is the ex-director of the NSA, and he says that NSA must constantly demonstrate its operational and technical prowess to deliver in all business areas. The military account is basic to NSA as a defence agency and lack of utter faithfulness to this fact will court decline. At the same time, the demands for increased global access are growing. Documents like this, a dispatch written by Admiral William Studeman, NSA's last director, provide a remarkable insight into NSA's hopes and fears for the future. Over the last two years, staff at Menwith Hill have lost track of an abundance of similar revealing items. They range from chatty bulletins to the highest classifications NSA has. Secret, confidential, for official use only. Top secret, top secret code word. These lists of highly classified projects reveal that inside Men With Hill are more than 250 secret NSA electronic surveillance systems. Each one has its own rather special code name. Trout Man, Ultra Pure, Totalizer, Moonpenny, Silverweed, Ruckus. Well, they reveal virtually everything uh, with regard to the organization, personnel, uh, structure, uh, naming of, of systems in this ground station. They, what the documents represent taken together and, pr and processed is a really unprecedented look at the internal setup of any NSA station. How do you think that NSA will feel about that on security grounds? Well, I think the security officers may uh, be holding their hearts for a while. Uh, I think they will go ballistic. The documents tell us what these domes are and what they do. But what you don't see here is the most expensive part of Menwith Hill. That's out in space a fleet of listening satellites called Vortex, costing more than a billion dollars each. The base has been expanding for 20 years. There's now 21 radomes with tracking dishes inside. The documents reveal just how important Men With Hill is to NSA's work in signals intelligence, SIGINT for short. Men With Hill station is the largest field station in the agency and as such is responsible for a multi-billion dollar investment in SIGINT systems. It's field station F-83 in NSA's global listening network. These domes are the runway system, the connection between satellites in space and computers on the ground. These domes are Moonpenny, therefore intercepting communications from other countries' satellites. This new block is Thistle, inside a giant computer center with some of the world's most advanced computers. Project Magistrand, inside here, is a key part of a new global intelligence processing system. 
Inside the operations building, 400 meters long, are the Silkworth computers. They process information coming down from the satellites in space. They're sitting there listening for a variety of communications via walkie-talkie, radio telephone, uh, microwave uh, telephone. Uh, all those type of communications uh, essentially leak and can then be uh, intercepted or collected by these uh, systems in space. Without the knowledge of the people sending the messages? Absolutely without the knowledge of those sending the messages. It's only the people who work here who know which individuals, companies and countries are its targets. Before being allowed to work on so-called black programs, secret intelligence work, they must be investigated, indoctrinated, and swear lifetime oaths of secrecy. Only once has someone spoken out. I've worked on a number of different black programs, um, starting in 1977, working all the way through 1984. I'm talking about um, COVID operations that do exist on uh, satellite programs and th those types of uh, installations. Margaret Newsham worked here as a computer software manager for the Silkworth computer system. She claims that within black projects like Silkworth, malpractice was virtually the norm. From the very beginning of my employment, it became very much aware to me that massive security violations were taking place. All the programs that I did work on were subject to these abuses. And that wasn't all. Inside building 36D at Menwith, she was invited to listen in on an American senator's intercepted phone call. After leaving, she informed the US Congress about what she'd heard. She told them... It became very evident to me that quite a few of the constitutional laws had been broken. 15, 35. Only one person in the world has ever got NSA to admit intercepting his messages. U.S. lawyer Abdin Jabala is a veteran of the civil rights movement. Last month he came to Yorkshire to tell the Otley campaigners about his experiences. There has not been a case uh, prior to it nor after it in which any American has been able to establish that the NSA was targeting their international communications. What has occurred as a result of this is that any American's foreign communications can be targeted legally by the NSA. Jabala was in Leeds to describe his experiences with NSA and its watch list. The key words and names that all NSA stations look for in the communications they intercept. All of them swept up into these computers, digital computers, maintained by the National Security Agency. You were on the watch list. We have got evidence that watching is done at Menwith Hill Station. How do you know that you're not on the watch list now? I don't know. I mean, that's what the real danger is, is there are no checks and balances. Uh, there is no method of, of monitoring the monitors. Laws introduced in the 1970s were supposed to have curtailed NSA surveillance of private citizens. But do they work? It took me 18 years to get my records finally destroyed. It is like Big Brother. It's like 1984 uh, of surveilling people all over the globe. And if you're British, if you're French, if you're Dutch, if you're any, any people anywhere. You have no right to complain about this. You have zero rights. When you make an international phone call, the chances are it'll travel by satellite. This is one of the newest generation of communication satellites. It can relay almost 100,000 phone calls at once. A constellation of 18 relay satellites like this rings the world. At the satellite control center, they know that when they send a customer's phone call out into space, it's not possible to be sure that they are the only ones listening when the signals bounce back. For many years, NSA and, and other uh, SIGIN agencies throughout the world have sought to intercept these communications for either uh, national security intelligence purposes or for at least some nations commercial intelligence purposes. Few people realize just how easy it is to tap into satellite links. 
So, back in Britain, dispatches arranged a simple demonstration. We pointed an ordinary satellite TV dish at a telecommunication satellite over the Atlantic and just tuned in. But when you write me a letter, tell me you want the checking account closed and the savings account closed. Ooh, uh, okay. Right. okay, honey, bye-bye. By adding an ordinary radio to this simple domestic equipment, it's possible to select from dozens of phone calls. Uh, I thought Joe was going to take care of all that. Well, see, because your wife was in the hospital, it's like, I, uh, yours is like $25. Carrier, but it's like configuration, you know, the squadron. I don't think I should ever be able to make a phone call and feel comfortable again. That's right. Talking about anything that's sensitive and... It's so easy to pick up on such simple uh, equipment. Imagine what's going on in there. The equipment for our demonstration cost £1,500 and could cost much less. Men with Hill Station has cost billions. There are good reasons why America has put its biggest surveillance base in Britain. One may be interested in uh, the information coming down from a satellite, one may be interested in the information going up to a satellite in the years of the superpower conflict, when our over the overwhelming target for the technical collection sensors was the great landmass of the Soviet Union, its northern hemisphere. Uh, the UK was magnificently positioned and provided enormously valuable real estate. NSA documents reveal that the hill is at the center of a far-flung network. Every month, thousands of recording tapes and tons of classified equipment are shipped to and from NSA sites all over Britain. Some are large and well-known, others dispatches can reveal for the first time. Their operations are supervised or supported from men with hill. Edsel in Scotland, we found a new space intelligence center rapidly developing, codename Comfy Cobalt. Chicksands, Bedfordshire. This base targets diplomatic communications from European cities. Feltwell, Norfolk. A recently built space tracking centre is expanding again. Molesworth, Cambridgeshire. A new NSA centre collects and analyses signals intelligence for military commands. Cheltenham, where this new computer centre is another hub of NSA's Magistran network. The documents reveal that a new and previously unknown NSA organization in Britain is located far from Yorkshire. The NSA section of this British-built base near Buden, Cornwall is identified in the documents as ISS, a previously unknown subsection of the NSA. Bude is second only to the hill itself as a satellite intelligence center. Dispatches has confirmed that Butte's primary target never has been the Soviet Union, but Western communications satellites. Like men with Hill, the Butte base relies on huge computers to select the messages NSA wants to read. Are you familiar with a station that Britain built at Butte in Cornwall for satellite interception? Does that provide that function? Well, it certainly has the capabilities of uh, performing that function. How wide is that capability? Uh, well, I, <clears throat> again, I, I don't want to get into any, uh, anything classified, but uh, uh, I suspect that that uh, is a very technically uh, uh, capable uh, installation. In respect of all communication satellites? Uh, so far as I know. At spy bases like Menwith Hill, extraordinary measures are needed to conceal the base's targets. Most sensitive of all is when America spies on its friends. One American, an experienced former NSA employee, has told us what's involved. To protect his identity, an actor repeats what he told us in a recent interview in America. Men with Hill was responsible for intercepting ILC and NDC traffic from 1966 to 1976. Then came the satellite intercepts like Moonpenny. ILC is international leased carrier, basically ordinary commercial traffic, your and my phone calls. And NDC is non-US diplomatic communications.
But that job was later moved out of Men With Hill during the 1970s to Chicksands, where a special unit called Dodd Jock was run by the NSA direct from Men With Hill. Dodd Jock stands for Department of Defense Joint Operations Center, Chicksands. Because of the high sensitivity of its work, no Britons were ever allowed in. Documents from the Hill also reveal that the NSA network in Britain has had two main groups of targets. Analyzing intelligence in the two areas has been the responsibility of separate divisions seen on this Men With Hill command structure. A division called CTAR-1 deals with what NSA calls its A target, the former Soviet Empire. CTAR-2 took a wider field of view. ROW, in NSA jargon, stands for the rest of the world. But it's usually US intelligence policy not to spy on close allies from their own territory. The countries from which diplomatic communications were being intercepted by Dodd-Jock included uh, France, Denmark, the Netherlands. The British presence at Chicksands was trivial. It was limited to two operators kept behind a curtain who were allowed to use the base antenna system for direction finding. Opinions vary about whether or not NSA would ever dare to spy on Britain from Britain. I'm not saying that we necessarily performed the collection in the host country. Uh, it might have been collected somewhere else. That, that would be up to the agency to decide how best to collect on a target. I could never think of spying against Great Britain. The relationship is too close, it's too important, it's too vital to us to endanger. As a rule, um, I believe that the United States government would never spy on the British government and would never direct the National Security Agency to try to collect information on British government uh, entities or individuals. Uh, however, having said that that would be the rule, I would never say never in this business because at the end of the day, national interests are national interests. And uh, as close as the U.S. and the U.K. are, sometimes our interests diverge. So never say never, especially in this business. In Washington, intelligence priorities have changed totally. Both the NSA and the CIA, in overall charge of U.S. intelligence, have been forced to find new targets or face budget cuts. So what's to be done with the satellites and the bases? Should they be mobilized to serve U.S. business? That question has preoccupied U.S. politicians. Yes, we have slain a large dragon, but we live now in a jungle filled with a bewildering variety of poisonous snakes. The director of central intelligence will take a strong lead in reorienting the intelligence community to deal with this new world. Mr. Wolsey, uh, a few American corporations have claimed that... One senator asked if U.S. intelligence could now be targeted on America's commercial competitors. Senator Luger, that is uh, in some ways the, uh, the, the, the hottest current topic in intelligence policy issues. Uh, but Dispatches has discovered that the U.S. first gave priority to commercial intelligence over 20 years ago. It began uh, while I was with the President's Foreign Intelligence Advisory Board, of which I was executive director in uh, 1970. Uh, by and large, we recommended that henceforth economic intelligence be considered a function of the national security, uh, enjoying a priority equivalent to diplomatic, military, technological intelligence. Some intelligence chiefs were keen to put the recommendation into practice. People are beginning to appreciate that the business community is an essential part of defending our country. There are those rare instances when you can do something to help a particular company in your country. I came across one as director of the CIA in 1979. One of our chiefs of station in a foreign country came home. I was visiting with him. Joe, how are things in country X? Well, he had the most unusual experience. An agent he had operating inside that country happened to come out without any instructions, but just happened to bring out some information about what three foreign companies were bidding in a major contract against one American company. 
I was dumbfounded. I said, what did you do about it, Joe? And he said, well, we don't have any policy on this, so I did nothing, which led to my investigating what our policy should be. What that investigation revealed was, number one, that there was tremendous resistance in the CIA and elsewhere in our government to doing this kind of thing. You know, old chap, it isn't the right thing to do and such forth. Well, that uh, didn't impress me. After Admiral Turner took over at the CIA, a new organization was set up inside the Department of Commerce. Its special function was to receive valuable information from US intelligence that the department could use to America's economic benefit. It's the Office of Intelligence Liaison. We were not allowed to go inside. So, using the Freedom of Information Act, we asked for its standing orders. They show that this office receives some of the unique type of intelligence collected at NSA stations like Menwith Hill, called... Sensitive Compartmented Information. Where commercial intelligence is concerned, it's not just a question of whether or not the CIA or the NSA should provide secret information about foreign rivals. Many of America's largest corporations have a direct relationship to NSA itself. And helping the agency keep track of the world's communications is big business. Intelsat communication satellites are made by Loral. So are the stations that spy on them. Lockheed Aerospace is the largest employer in California's Silicon Valley. They make aircraft and missiles and listening satellites for the NSA. I believe, and I have evidence to suggest, that large military industrial corporations have very big vested interests in the structure of Menwith Hill Station and in the information they are gathering. Lockheed and Loral are indeed intimately involved in running Menwith Hill. These are part of NSA's plans for the new operations center, which will open next year. This is the space in the new building to be occupied by Lockheed. And this is the space for Loral Space Systems. This small area has been provided for the British Liaison Office. Obviously, there was an intimate relationship between uh, the development of certain intelligence collection platforms uh, uh, that Lockheed had developed and the U.S. government. Uh, but again, uh, it would have been uh, accidental, incidental, peripheral if they were given uh, intelligence to, to provide them with some commercial advantage either over an American company or a foreign company. It's clear from these documents just how comprehensively Lockheed and Loral are integrated into Memwith Hill operations. This document from Lockheed helps detail how they set up and manage the Silkworth computers. They're still involved in running them. The structure of Menwith Hill shows that the function of the Silkworth section, R01, is collection processing, meaning direct access to data collected by satellites as it's sorted. Another section, called R03, appears to be operated almost entirely by Lockheed. It directs satellites to their targets. And the third operations division does analysis and reporting, Part of this is a section called Thistle. It, too, includes staff from Lockheed. We asked both companies if they had access to NSA intelligence at Menwith. We were told... Lockheed has a number of employees in the UK. Loral is a very large organization. Why should observers, particularly in another country, believe that these major US companies aren't benefiting with commercial intelligence from their direct access to and indeed operational some of the collection systems. Yeah, they, they have employees who help uh, operate ground stations. Uh, those people rarely have access to the actual data, the operate system. They don't see the information. Nonetheless, how can others be reassured? Well, yeah, I've gotten comfortable on that score. Uh, I spent my life uh, being as candid as I could be, both with the Congress and the public and the media. And I have never knowingly lied about this topic. And when I tell you directly that I don't believe they have access, I believe that's all the assurance that people are going to get. Dispatches has obtained information which suggests that the Tornado, one of Britain's most advanced military exports, has attracted the attention of US intelligence. Communications of British and other companies making the tornado were targeted by the NSA. 
British Aerospace is a major member of the Panavia Group, who make the tornado. The United States was always concerned about the purchase of non-American advanced armaments by the government of Saudi Arabia. We were certainly aware that uh, by preventing a, a foreign government from selling something that we hoped would lead an American entity to be able to sell that would certainly contribute to our commercial interests, but that was not the first priority. These documents reveal that monitoring the Middle East is a major part of Menwith Hill's spy satellite work. We found that many of its staff are linguists specializing in Arabic, Hebrew, or Farsi. The base won an award for intelligence support to Desert Storm, and a special certificate from the Secretary for Defense for helping in the Iran-Iraq war. While monitoring the Middle East, it's certain that some British messages to and from Saudi Arabia would also be intercepted and analyzed. NSA would provide us with raw intercepts if they felt they were something of particular interest given the key words that had been provided over a period of time. In connection with this potential deal, were any uh, particular names put on the, the watch list keyword activity that you recall? Well, I, I recall that the uh, word tornado, panavia, uh, information related to the specific uh, aircraft uh, would have been priority targets that we would have wanted information about. These intrusions by a foreign power on the British landscape are one of the Otley women's greatest concerns. I'd never really thought of myself as a patriot, but I became very, very conscious of what Great Britain meant to me. This was one of the reasons that made me want to object to the men with Hill. I don't like what they do. It is spying, and it's, there's always something slightly distasteful anyway in our English upbringing. When you think about spying, you feel a bit put off by it. This is the brand new control centre at Menwith Hill. It's NSA codename, Steeplebush 2. The women from Motley have already been in to investigate the new developments. Beyond the turnstiles and just round to the right is the Hill's top secret new operations centre. The new Steeplebush 2 is unlike any other building at Menwith Hill. It's fortified like a bunker. A thick roof, earth embankments and heavy doors protect the offices and equipment inside. This new satellite ground terminal, just built, connects directly to Steeplebush 2. Evidence from here in America suggests that it'll be the ground processing station for NSA's biggest ever listening satellite. NSA plans passed to dispatches reveal that Steeplebush 2 is to be completed on 15 May 1994, in time for the new satellite to be launched. Its equipment on the ground, seen here, is codenamed Rutley. It's all part of a continuous and massive expansion. Just six months ago, the Moonpenny satellite interception team trebled their order for the cording tapes. They said they'd had a change in mission requirements. NSA's forward plans for Menwith Hill list more than 30 projects to be installed between now and 1995. It all points to much more spying.